So good afternoon, everyone. I want to introduce Veronica Salvador and myself, Chris Haggerty, from Cal State East Bay up in Hayward. We're about 25 miles or so from here. Or in traffic, we're about four hours away. <laughs> it's so easy. Just take the 880 north. So uh, this is completely unrehearsed, and Liz knows that uh, there's usually a lot of words that then go into the final presentation, so I'll try to keep as close to the script as possible. So as a quick introduction, um, I was the designated IT project manager at East Bay for the migration project, and Veronica was um, my partner in crime. She was the business system analyst. And that role, kind of both of our roles morphed at the beginning of the project into helping one another. I was new to the campus and so was really focused on the planning and the methodology wrapped around what we needed to do to get from Singularity to OnBase. And Veronica was the SME, the subject matter expert with all the personalities on the campus and uh, knowing the ins and outs and Really, uh, we couldn't have done it. I couldn't have done it without her. Um, so with that said, I'll continue. Thank you very much. So as you see here, started September 2014, finished November 2015. That's not what the original schedule said. The original schedule said that we would start around Thanksgiving time of 2014 and we would be done by the end of March of 2015. Well, have I got some news for you. <laughs> we'll see that in just a moment. Um, as any complicated project goes, as you all know, uh, we ran into some changes along the way. Uh, scope changed a little bit. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, we really did pretty much stick to what we were uh, going for. And that was to migrate from Singularity, because it was no longer going to be supported by Highland. And as well, it was writing on an old OS that Microsoft was no longer going to support. Um, so we sped as quickly forward as we could to get away from Singularity and into OnBase. Agenda, project team responsibilities, milestones, lessons learned. Um, boy, I reached out, I remember long ago, and uh, talked with Janice over at, at Northridge. And, asked for some information and, and uh, lessons learned and got a lot of useful information. But you know, it's not a one-for-one -one comparison. What one campus does is not necessarily the exact same thing that another campus is going to do. So uh, we've, both Veronica and I, kept the lessons learned going as we, as we uh, progressed in the project and we've highlighted some of those things here. Of course, the project scope, as I said already, moved from Singularity to OnBase. And on, in our particular case, we did this in one full bore project. All departments were moving at once. That meant 10 departments. And when we reached out to other campuses, we learned that at that time, and I'm not sure if that's changed now or not, but at that time, we were the only campus that was going um, all or nothing. We procured and we staged new equipment. We did not go to the cloud-based solution. We went locally, and um, part of that scope as well was training the system administrator. And I made a typo here. This is system administrators. It's plural. Um, the power users and as well as the users. Training in OnBase, um, I'd have to say overall went pretty smoothly because everyone that we trained was very familiar already with Singularity. And the concepts are the same, though maybe the menus were, were different. So there was our lock, stock, and barrel, our, all of the departments that were participating in this project uh, moving from Singularity, moving off of Singularity, and moving into OnBase. <clears throat> one department was a holdout, and that one department was a holdout because they had no, they had never used Singularity. They had a custom grown solution where they scanned. They used a third party vendor um, who kept data 
in various forms of media, would deliver that media to their office and they'd keep it locally. Um, they are, they have wised up, <laughs> and Liz is now gone, but they have wise, oh, hi, <laughs> there you are. I can't see you with all these lights. Um, they've, they are now moving towards on base. That's a small effort that's going on right now. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, Liz, hi. <laughs> Um, I split this, uh, this steering committee responsibilities uh, into two different slides because we really did need all of the steering committee's uh, participation to steer us from, uh, to steer the entire campus. Um, our user base was in the, in the thousands. Um, it was a monumental effort and we needed support from each of the departments that you saw earlier. Um, to take the word and, and have it trickle down to their constituents. I'd have to say that it went very, very smoothly. So many of the steering committee meetings I'm, I recall in my memory banks, um, there were never any, any arguments, there was never any finger pointing, there was never any disagreement. Um, I, I was always, I always remarked to Veronica afterwards how smoothly it went and how well the, the direction was coming from university management. There's a lot of information here. I won't go through each and every bullet point. Um, I'm going to switch slides here to the next one. You'll see that there were really, really a lot of things that, that we shared with the steering committee that they were going to be responsible for. And again, there was never one representative from any of the departments who said otherwise or disagreed with part of what we were asking them to do. And that was pretty much strictly to communicate, um, to take the message. Yeah, sure. Um, Veronica, please. Um, so I think Chris is emphasizing this steering committee. Um, for us in particular, you know, on, on base is a universe, uh, enterprise wide solution. And we have, as you saw, 10 different departments from all over campus that use it. And so there is no kind of data steward or owner of on base, you know, besides our system administrators. So we really needed the um, steering committee that, that was comprised of leaders of these different departments to come together to decide on, you know, and any issues we encountered so that we can get, you know, um, every department has a voice um, and then everybody can come together and decide together. Mm -hmm. So that was one important reason to run things by the steering committee. Exactly. And you brought up a good point there and that was to make sure that we had unanimous decisions along the way. And I mentioned earlier that in our particular case, in the life of, of us as a running that project, uh, it, it ran what I'd say now in hindsight, and even so while it was ongoing, that it was running smoothly um, for this large effort for the enterprise-wide effect that it was having on the campus. Um, again, in hindsight, uh, if we had it to do all over again, would we do things differently? Well, perhaps. Uh, that's always in life you're going to do that. But along the way, there were nights where I'd lose a little sleep, but overall, um, what I did want to mention was instead of doing a soft shoe that I had promised my colleagues from East Bay, um, I did want to mention that at the start of the project, and I'm going to move to that slide now, at the start of the project, about two years ago, um, my hair was dark black, <laughs> full head of hair. I weighed 127 pounds. I was five foot four. <laughs> See what on base can do for you. <laughs> this is the living proof. No, uh, for all intents and purposes, it did run really smoothly. Um, with the support we had from uh, Liz and the other counterparts at, at Highland, um, we had a splendid team. Um, we fortunately had the same team members that started the project with us that finally took us all the way through to implementation. And I think that was, that was something that was um, different from other campuses that I'd spoken with. Um, 
and that it worked in our favor um, and to our benefit. I did point out that about two years ago, I participated down at Northridge um, at a training meeting that Northridge gave and hosted. Highland representatives came to the campus and talked about um, what on base was. I learned a whole lot right there and then learned that uh, we were going to launch our project ourselves. Um, so that was in August of 2014. Um, as you see here in the far upper left, our first discovery sessions took place in December of 14. That gap there was getting the schedule established, getting our, our, uh, our funding all secured, getting the project uh, spun up, forming the steering committee, some holidays were involved there, and as we all know, there's vacation time. So we did the discovery sessions on our campus in a three-day uh, format with Highland in December of 2014. At that time, before any change requests came through and before any scope changed, it was looking as though we were going to go live in March of 2015. And um, at the start of the presentation, you saw that we went live last November. So what happened from March of 2015 to November of 2015, and that was um, a couple of things that, uh, as we said, scope changed. We learned uh, as we were moving. Um, EDI, we learned that that uh, entire process that San Francisco State was, was addressing, um, that that was bigger than a bread box. So uh, as that unfolded, we learned that um, we were going to be needing a little bit more time. Also, one of the important aspects that occurred, and um, the steering committee came forward and was extremely cooperative in understanding that on base 14 was the product that we had purchased and moving forward with, um, on base 15 was coming out. Um, and so in the middle part of 2015, just over a year ago, we had the option then of saying, wait, um, we've learned a lot about 20, about on base 14 versus the new version. A lot of the security improvements that had been made that Highland had worked on were pushed in 2015. And so the testing that we had managed through in, in um, on base 14 then needed to be rerun so we did in our testing samples, we had new use cases from one version to the other, and that pushed us out um, with some additional time as well. You see that in testing and training. Um, rollout, as you see, originally planned in March. What the actual date was, was the beginning of November. Lessons learned. Again, I won't go through each and every bullet point here. Um, you've, you'll get the slides afterwards in uh, soft copy and you can have a look there. Uh, the things that I'd say is that I mentioned earlier that Veronica and I had kept track of the lessons learned. As we were moving along, um, things could change and, and I'd have to say again, as a successful project, that the lessons learned could have been uh, pages and pages and pages long, really wasn't that uh, that volume. Um, I will say one thing that uh, is only going to help campuses who are rolling out on base now and in the future um, within our family of, of uh, Cal State. I sort of wish that this group had been together two years ago and that we were sitting in this forum right at the onset of our project rather than now at the, uh, after we've gone live. Um, the, uh, the wonderful support that I've seen here and the, the large networking ability that we've got and opportunity that can be taken is second to none. So if there's newer users out there, take advantage of it. I, it's not on here, but it's something that um, I'd say a word to, word to the wise um, is only gonna help questions and answers, um, rely on, uh, let's rely on each other for, for help. We at East Bay are in a, in a good position, I'd say, logistically and geographically. We've got 
this campus, San Jose. We've got San Francisco nearby. We've got Sonoma, um, ourselves at East Bay and Hayward. So geographically, it, it's possible to get together uh, physically. Um, but then we've got Zoom. And, and look, you can meet virtually across the state of California with one another. The last slide here is uh, I'm going to turn the microphone over to Veronica because um, at the beginning of this year, at the beginning of 2016, I moved uh, within our project management office away from being a project manager to being a service and communication liaison where um, ITIL calls it a BRM, a business relationship management role. And Ben from uh, Ben Quillian and I were talking about this role or earlier about uh, um, the benefit of having a voice of the community to the PMO and to the IT services side to understand requirements out in the field for what our business is looking for. Uh, we're made up of various colleges. We're made up, those colleges are made up of various divisions and departments. So what one department is needing and wanting might be very similar to what another department on the campus is doing, um, or maybe even implementing, but they're not talking to one another. We as uh, the service liaisons have an opportunity to communicate and help broaden that spectrum. So I moved away from that role uh, as PM, and Veronica uh, has continued that role in some other projects that we've got that are ongoing now. So currently I'm leading the um, on-base workflow project. So as you can see from what Chris was talking about, on-base is very new to our campus. And so for us beginning to utilize the workflow license, um, we're having the vendor build out three workflows for us. And then moving forward, we've hired a workflow developer to maintain those workflows and then create new ones. Because you know we, we foresee a lot of needs um, at the university that, that would like to use the workflow. Um, and so right now, um, we've identified our solution requirements to the vendor, and they're building it um, right now. So I don't have a lot of lessons learned, because um, we're still kind of the vendor still building it. We haven't tested or anything like that. But um, our, our workflows consist of employee reimbursement, um, a check request, and a travel authorization that pretty much goes hand in hand with the employee reimbursement part when it comes to travel. So there will be three different forms. Um, and again, since OnBase is so new to our campus, um, I think one of the big issues for our campus is really to train all the faculty and staff to, you know, log into OnBase and, you know, use the online forms, which um, I think they'll be very user friendly is, 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 and I think that they will like it, but, you know, change is difficult. And so, like another um, university mentioned, the getting buy-in from the staff and, and the faculty that we're going to have to do that too just because some people just resist change and, and having to learn and log into a whole new system. And again, somebody also mentioned it's dependent on IE, right? And a lot of us like to use Chrome or other browsers and people always come up and say, why do I have to? Why can't I use my favorite browser? So, you know, I, I, I think that'll be the biggest challenge, honestly, for this project is just um, getting buy-in. But, you know, for the user acceptance testing, um, we plan to bring in a wide base of university users so that, you know, they get their voice heard and we get buy-in at the same time and they basically give us all, you know, their wish list of, no, it's not working because you missed this. So we hope to capture all that at that time. Um, so that's workflow. And then, oh, another project that we were looking into um, was the on-base transcript capture OCR, and we were actually um, talking with San Francisco State to get their lessons learned, because obviously they're like the experts on that now. Um, however, our campus is undergoing the transition from quarters to semesters, and that has really taken a priority. We, we're finding that we can't really allocate resources like we would, because we really have to focus on efforts. So for now, that project will be put on hold, and we're just um, moving forward with this workflow. And, and the one thing that Oh. came up afterwards that I, we didn't have on this slide, because um, you're right, the, the OCR project was just put on hold um, indefinitely in lieu of the, uh, the um, uh, quarter to semester conversion, which is also enterprise-wide and touches every single person on campus that's student, uh, staff, and faculty. Um, 
that, that's going to take uh, a couple more years and will go live with being on quarters in fall of 20, 2018. Mm -hmm. So it, as you can tell just from the timeline, it's a monumental effort. Um, so we, we'd interacted with the folks from San Francisco, the SMAs there, and we've decided to give them a little bit more time to, to bone up more because you're already so good, you're only going to be better by the time we need it after we're done with the conversion. Thank you. <laughs> um, but the, the one thing that's not on there is the other department that decided that they had heard such good news about OnBase that they wanted to go from their third party vendor and move over to OnBase. Um, it's already built, it's already on the campus. We've got the, the scanners, so we've got the, the wherewithal and the resources. Um, our operations sysadmin is in the audience here, Matt. Um, he's part of his responsibility and, and his forte is training users and uh, they've already been in place and, and have uh, interacted already. So um, as we've heard and as we understand from our sister campuses, um, there are so many other modules available and, and as we grow and as we learn, now that we've got the foundation of OnBase, um, we'll continue to go forward. I'm very hopeful there's a half hour's worth of questions. <laughs> Is there? No? Okay. <laughs> I did see an arm. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, I have a question about keywords, and since you have a very diverse, those 10 different departments, uh -huh. did, you, did the steering committee get involved with coming up with any standards for keyword naming, since OnBase has just a central keyword store? Did you have any co problems with conflicts? Uh, one department deciding that this keyword would meant this, and another department saying no. Uh, we, we wanted the same keyword name, with well, a different meaning. Um, Veronica, yeah, would you? So um, when we went through the discovery sessions and we, you know, went through all the taxonomy of all the different departments. Um, I guess already in Singularity, a lot of the indexes, you know, were established, and they didn't change all that much. Right. And when they built those indexes in Singularity, they were pretty common already and consistent. Um, so, I we I don't think we saw a need to weigh in on, it, you know, because it kind of stayed the same. There wasn't that many, that much difference. Okay, great. In thanks. in the discovery, uh, um, to piggyback on what you were saying. Um, in the discovery, as I said at the beginning of the presentation, it took three days. Uh, we did it department by department um, and um, took each of their, um, their singularity document classes um, and then made the, the visual transition to doc types, gave them the opportunity to choose the keywords and whatnot. And what we found from the discovery session, the outcome of that was primarily that they took the 460 some odd doc classes that were residing in Singularity and reduced that number by combining document um, documents, um, shelving others. Uh, we use, I remember using the term, uh, it's a time to, that you can clean the closet now and get rid of the old things that you no longer use. Um, and we went from a number in the 460 some odd range to the 360 some odd range. So um, keywords were indeed uh, already established, like Veronica said, in singularity. And really there wasn't any, any um, really great need for discussion to reduce or eliminate or change. Okay, thanks. Sure. Other questions? Had two questions. Um, they're both uh, singularity um, pre-existing pre conditions. Um, one, were you using any sort of OCR process in singularity? We had any doc um, that time. Uh, Matt and Veronica, I, I don't believe it was OCR related that was going on in singularity. There, sorry? Okay, did you hear that? Yes. Years and years ago. Um, do you need a microphone, Matt?
Matt Perry is our operational sysadmin. Um, we've got another technical sysadmin that couldn't make it today that would have been here. But Matt's been around uh, our campus for quite some time. 2003. Yeah. So uh, when we first, uh, when I first started in uh, our imaging area, we had uh, any doc, but we found that in its early rendition, it was not useful to us. So we actually went, moved away from that and stopped using it when we moved to uh, singularity capture. And then the, the second part of the question was, um, one of the pieces that we had in Singularity that we never actually implemented before we went through was some of the workflow, work management tools. And I was wondering if you ported any of that over to no. Ace or even looked at if you'd done it before or not. No, there weren't any workflow um, in Singularity that we moved over and migrated. It was the only thing, well, I don't want to minimize it by saying the only thing, the items that we migrated were uh, documents, uh, transcripts, uh, financial aid records and such, but no workflow. That's new on our campus, and that's the project that's in place right now. Thanks. Yes, sir. Microphone over here to the gentleman in the striped shirt. So you're talking about starting uh, these workflow projects for like three forms and travel reimbursements and things like that. How are you handling um, you know, the, all the people who have to submit them and all the people who have to approve them? Uh, are you using that workflow approval module? Uh, are, you, uh, are, are you, you know, putting, putting their, uh, their user IDs in, into uh, OnBase using like that Active Directory thing like we were talking about earlier. How are you handling all of that side of the uh, workflow? Um, that's exactly right. Um, they will be added into OnBase um, by our system administrator. We're working with him to do that. We're not at that point yet, but we will be. And um, how it works is these will be web-based forms. Um, you still log into it, and I believe they'll be authenticated, but they're web-based. So um, when a faculty member, say a department chair, um, or a dean needs to approve travel for one of their faculty, um, they'll take up a workflow license and a concurrent user license. So if a staff member just wants to submit a form, they use, a, they use up a concurrent user license. But if somebody needs to actually approve a form, they use up both a concurrent and a workflow user license. Are the approvers going to be going into like the Unity client, or how will they actually be doing their approvals? Um, they will be um, logging into OnBase. They won't need, it is my understanding, they won't need like their own thick client or anything on their desktop. They'll just be able to log in because it'll be web-based. So you're using the web client for that? Right. right. Okay, so they'll be essentially logging into OnBase via the web client, and you have to... Um, but do you, do you like, you have someone setting up their user IDs of all the approvals, or are they going to be like based on Active Directory groups, or? Yeah, I believe we'll build a group that will identify who the approvers are. And usually for us, it's pretty easy because there will be MPPs. So we can just kind of take our group of MPPs and put all their names as an approver. Does that make okay. sense? Are there any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you.